In today's episode, we're going to be building our very first small town within New Dollarton. This is very exciting. I plan to build many of these scattered around the countryside, all feeling super unique and different from one another, and would absolutely love your comments and feedbacks if you've got map suggestions, places I should check out, names, build techniques. Let me know, we're gonna be back here multiple times. This little fella is going to change so much throughout this series. He's gonna start his life out as a little farming village specializing in vegetables and cattle, and eventually, who knows? Maybe it stays this way, maybe it gets a little bit bigger. Creating these small places outside the big city is always so much fun for me. I think this is where you really see the connection between the built environment and the landscape, as well as a connection between the little town and the big smoke. I love seeing that, and I love building it as well. But clearly, I mean, this video is most probably gonna be a big one, so uh, let's get to it. Welcome back to New Dollarton. Well, hello, good morning. Yes, it is the morning in New Dimesburg, currently quarter to seven, looking pretty lovely at the moment. Uh, unfortunately, I wouldn't say the same about living in New Dimesburg. Yeah, things aren't quite as nice. It's high rent, uh, buildings are literally crumbling to the ground. I'd say probably high pollution, it's got high crime, it's just not that nice, not very pleasant. Plus, people are really wanting to live in much larger houses. Yeah, the one that green grass, the one that fresh air, uh, maybe I'm just trying to justify it, but we are getting out of New Dinesburg. No, we're not fixing it, <laughs> we're gonna get out. We're gonna get out and we're gonna build ourselves a good old country town. Now, as you can see by the countryside, we've actually got lots of really great areas to build our farmland in, so it's just a matter of figuring out the absolute best spot. I think that the biggest problem and the thing that I've got to consider the most is that the more I build on this city, the more I need to just think about what parts of this landscape is going to change. Because if I build, let's say if I build a little country town out here with some farmland, and then when I start building out the city a little bit further, I might decide that this might be a little bit different. I might even change my mind where about some of these mountains and hills sit, especially if we start getting some extra abilities when the game updates. So I just need to think about whereabouts I want to be placing down this country town and these farms in an area that I think I'm going to keep the most, if that makes sense. When I made this map, I made sure that all of this area is in fact fertile land, so we don't need to worry about having to build our farms on just a tiny little slither of fertile land. This whole area is, so that's nice and easy there. And I would also like this place to be connected to a pre-existing little highway that we've already got. We've got two highways that are dragged out. We've got this one that snakes its way all the way up into this outside connection, which would be a pretty good fit because we do have this train line as well. So it might be nice to connect it up to the train line straight up. Uh, but I'm actually thinking of instead using this highway. In terms of building out a town, I think it actually might be nice to build it around this stream. I think that a lot of towns are usually centered around little streams and rivers and bodies of water, and as well as, of course, a train line at some stage, which I do plan to drag out at a later date. So that would also be connecting up all of this to the greater region, including New Dimesburg. So this is kind of where about some thinking, and I'm also thinking about maybe placing it around this area. I mean, that kind of looks like a nice little bend for our little town, and then we could have some farmland kind of stretching around all these areas. All this looks pretty fertile, doesn't it? Now, a super underrated feature in City of Skylands 2 that I'm a massive fan of is the ability just to buy up a little bit of chunk of land rather than having to connect it up to all your other bits and pieces. No, I don't want to connect it up here. We're going to fly around here instead. Where was that area? Ah, oh, just here. Let's buy up these four tiles, just for now. Actually, let's just buy up a couple of extra ones. Reason why is because I want to change this road ever so slightly. Actually, when I say ever so slightly, I mean quite a lot. This is just a bit of a personal preference, but when I'm building in city skylines, especially when I'm building places out of the city, like country towns or villages, I think it's really important to try and have a couple of extra kinks and turns in your roads, just to kind of add a little bit of extra perspective in scale and just to make the places feel a little bit larger than they really are. You know, of course, in small towns and in the countryside, you will have 
roads that will just stretch for ages and ages, just going super straight. But I think that it kind of adds a little bit of extra scale. And for an area like this, I want to fit in as many ideas as possible. I don't want to just kind of be limited to one main road and, you know, one bend in the river that stretches through here. It'd be kind of nice to fit in lots of different types of ideas and concepts. So if you've got any ideas, please let me know because I don't think this will be the only time we work on this little area. I think we'll be back multiple times. So uh, I did just mention the river here. Uh, I kind of want to add an extra one. I think I'm going to stretch it through the town. This one's going to be on the outskirts of the town, whereas this one that I'm going to make, I think this one's going to go through the middle of it. I'm going to leave the game on pause because I'm going to do something a bit sneaky with this. This is going to be a super, super tiny one. And I'm going to use the flattening uh, tool key and I'm going to right click on that spot. And then that way I can kind of just eat into here. And the reason why I'm going to be sneaky is because I'm going to make it very windy. Actually, that's not the sneaky part. The sneaky part is that this will fill up with water. And I, of course, wanted to do that. But I actually want there to be trees here first. Because the thing that I don't love about this river, I did it kind of quick when I built this map. But uh, the things that I don't like about it is that the trees are kind of far away from where the actual water is. And... In real life, trees are pretty close. You know, you usually have quite a lot of foliage around these areas. So I kind of want, that's why I'm going to make this one a little bit wider, kind of just to aid into where those trees are. But for this guy, I reckon, hmm, first of all, I don't love that path. Let's make it a little bit better. So that river's kind of gone off into this little valley here. And as you can see, we've got, you know, the height difference is a little bit different. You know, we've got quite a bit of hills that are scattered around here. And that kind of just gave me the idea that, you know, this whole area is super close to the river. So I think that in real life, you'd actually see quite a lot of flooding around here. Now, unfortunately, you can't build houses on stilts in City Skylines 2. I think that a place like this would have had houses that are kind of built up on foundations just to prevent any sort of flooding. Um, but I think also on top of that, there would have, you know, all this would have probably been um, a little bit higher up. If you're going to build a town around here, I think it would be a smart idea to build up on an area that is, um, you know, obviously a little bit higher than the river is. I still think that flooding would occur, especially around the areas that are a little bit lower down. But I'm just going to raise all of this just a little tiny bit higher up. Talking about City Skylines 2, I think it's great that we have natural disasters included in City Skylines 2 from the get-go, but I have them turned off because I think that they are pretty underwhelming, to be honest. I would actually would have much preferred, and I'm still really hoping that this happens, but I kind of hope that we get some sort of DLC down the track because... You know, there's no fear when it, when I see a tornado, I don't really think it's anything that exciting or, you know, anything to worry about. They're kind of just there. All right. I'm actually really happy with the way that this landscape looks. I didn't really plan to do this, to be honest, but this is kind of working out. I think that now we have this uh, very subtle change in the way that the land kind of looks around here and I'm kind of getting ready to start laying down some roads. But before I do, I was talking about some trees. So before I hit play, I would like to just fill all this area up with some trees because that way when they do grow up and the water kind of flows through here, those trees will kind of be all over the top of that water and I think it's going to make for a more realistic looking little stream. So we'll have to see. This is my first time giving this a crack. Uh, let's see if this actually works. This is what the alders grow up into. Pretty big trees. I'm thinking that I actually might just turn down the brush strength for these and I'm gonna place these a little more sparingly. And instead, I'm gonna go for more with the London Plain. These are gonna be the main trees that are going to fit in this area. And the reason why I'm doing that is because these trees are kind of like small versions of the older trees and I want the smaller version because, again, we're going for scale. This is going to be a little town that's going to be sitting around here. And I want it to feel much larger than it truly is. I don't think there's going to be very many streets down here. I don't think there's going to be very many houses. And I think it's going to be like a much, much, much smaller version of what a town is going to look like. Now, obviously, towns do come in lots of uh, shapes and sizes. But 
You know, this is going to represent something that's probably a bit bigger than it really is. And I'm hoping that by placing down these smaller trees, then that way it's going to make everything else feel maybe a little bit bigger. We'll see how we go. All right. Pretty filled to the guild with trees and little bushes. My technique here has just been to place down the largest ones first and then kind of just taper off with some other types of trees. So I went with some older, went with some London Plain and some apple trees, which kind of hope they don't show any fruit on there because uh, might look a little bit random, but I think they're pretty good trees. They're kind of like a smaller version and a little bit of spruce. And now I'm going through with some wild bushes and that way I'm kind of going through and placing down the most amount of uh, foliage in these little valleys, but to be honest, I kind of want to see some trees growing down here And I'm not using any mods, so I have to kind of play the waiting game. So I think that's what I'm gonna do uh, Before I start doing anything else, I want to see these trees a little bit bigger. So I'm just gonna speed it up and I'm gonna go make a coffee and fold some washing and maybe something else So yeah All right, I'm back What did I miss? So, looks like, all right, we've got a little bit of, a little bit of growth here, not so bad. I have to admit, it's not entirely what I wanted. I uh, think there's a lot to be desired down here. I know that these trees are going to get a little bit bigger, so we do have to wait for that. But I think that I did a better job. When I made the map, I made a similar little area like this, and I think that this does a better job at kind of conveying that there is a little stream down here, even though there isn't, it's just a tiny little valley. I uh, kind of like that. So maybe, maybe I just need to change it up a bit. Hmm, I don't know. I'm still trying to figure this out. I think maybe the older down here is more essential than some of these tiny bushes, because I don't think they're gonna grow very big. Whereas these alders are nice and tall and they have a nice bit of growth that will kind of cover up some of these areas. So I don't know, might just have to wait and see and just get a good sense of how these things are going to grow. I think we might need some mods. We need some mods, don't we? Part of me kind of likes waiting for the trees to grow and then part of me just thinks that for areas like this where I'm just creating environment, I don't know, I just need it to be the size that it's going to be. But that does give us a pretty good starting point for the environment. I have a good sense of where the landscape is sitting and the contours of the land, which is looking pretty interesting. I think that the majority of our town is gonna to sit around here in the web farmland, kind of situated up on these hillsides. Hopefully that works pretty well. Uh, but I guess we're ready for this road. So just messing around with the layout of this road, I really like the fact that we've got a slight variation in the grid layout over on either side. You, know, you can kind of tell that it's kind of doing a very similar thing, but also slightly different. And we've also got this bend too. I'm taking slight inspiration from Somerville, which is just outside of New York. And I noticed as well within that place, we've also got this fork in the road where the road kind of like darts off in different directions. And I think that might be kind of fun Plus, I think it's going to make a bit of sense in this area because we've got this outside connection, but I also kind of feel like we need to kind of cross this river at some point, and that might be a good way to do that. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an intersection just following the grid. Hmm. You know what? Instead, rather than doing it right there, how about we have our intersection that kind of forks off like that? There we go. Kind of gives us a bit of a change in the grid. I like that. And he can just continue along that way. You know, I'm sort of like half tempted to do this. And then I'm also half tempted to do that too. But what I'm going to do instead is I feel like a diagonal road quite like that. Uh, an old road. You know, this road's been here for a while. So I feel like this is not a highway or anything like that. This is an old road. And I think a diagonal road across... A uh, stream like this would have been a lot of extra engineering, you know? You know, I sort of feel like that's just too much road. It's too much bridge. As soon as you start making a bridge, that's expensive for a city. So instead, this is what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to change the river. 
Now, of course, if you were uh, building a city in real life, you wouldn't just, you know, change the river so you didn't have to build as much of a bridge. <laughs> That's a little bit ridiculous. Uh, but I guess I'm playing both as God and as well as a city planner. So we're just gonna snake him around here. And I actually kind of like that bend in the river. I think I might create a couple of extra ones as I creep into some of these areas because I do think that uh, I need to widen this ever so slightly just to kind of, you know, eat into where some of these trees sit and just kind of create just a little bit more points of interest, you know, just by going kind of like that. And maybe even just a little bit of that, potentially. And now for the bridge, I can lower the cost of creating this by now not having to create as much of a bridge. I'm not expecting too much, uh, well in fact I'm not really expecting any types of boats to really be traveling underneath it, so the clearance doesn't have to be too high. And what I'm trying to do is just make it so it's the same level going across. I can actually look at that little slope over there and I want it to be as close to zero as possible, which I don't know if I'm going to get. Maybe if I turn off some snapping and instead, oh, that's pretty close to zero, that'll do. Oh, now that is a nice looking bridge. I really love the symmetry that's going on on either side. I do think I might have been a little bit too generous with the amount of clearance underneath this bridge, but it's fine, I'm gonna leave it for now. Uh, maybe I'll make it a little bit more flush to the ground a little later. But this angle is what I'm truly happy about. I think that's going to be a nice little windy road eventually. And maybe we'll get there in this episode, maybe we won't. We'll see what happens. I reckon a farm might sit over here, but uh, we'll just leave it. Uh, I'd like to finish up this road and then we'll start figuring out what this grid's gonna look like. That'll do for now, but there's a good chance I'm going to change this outside connection to somewhere more like that and then this road will probably connect up to some area like that. But all this area is a bit unknown. I am more certain around here, but everything else is kind of up in the air. For the bridge in town, I'm gonna to make this the smallest, tiniest little bridge. So I'm gonna use some techniques. Maybe I can probably make this a little bit different in City Skylines 2, but I'm gonna do this uh, the old fashioned way, the way I used to do it in City Skylines 1, and I'm gonna just uh, make that little little section like that. Oh, check out that little guy down there. I think that is exactly what I want. Just the smallest, tiniest bridge. I love it. And look, I probably don't really need to keep on harping on about this, but I am going to continue anyway because I am truly obsessed and absolutely loving just figuring out the layout of all the different pieces of this series and just trying to work out how they interconnect and how they are going to navigate this landscape in a realistic way and also just interact with all the different features of the built environment because all these sort of things are just so much fun and I'm really enjoying the fact that we have all these different tools to just really play around with it in a much easier sense. I mean City Skylines 1, yeah you were able to do some pretty great things with these roads but the ease of just dragging them out using all these guides and also just seeing them snap together in a much easier sense is just something that I'm really appreciating at the moment. And I really can't wait to see what asset creators end up doing with these networks because I think that the actual road textures, uh, I mean, they are more detailed and better in some senses, but I also feel like this game just in general feels very clean. You know, it doesn't seem like there's any grime or any grit to any of the, uh, well, a lot of the different textures that are kind of going on, especially with the roads. So I actually can't wait to see just how textured and how detailed these roads are going to get when people start creating some custom assets. Especially for little places like this that do feel a little bit too squeaky clean for a town that has a lot of trucks and tractors and uh, people just driving off road. I kind of feel like we need some more dirt around, but that's alright, it's good for now. And in terms of layout, this is pretty good for now. My technique of dragging out all these main roads first and then figuring out where all the little streets and alleyways and dirt roads shoot off from it, I just think is making for more realistic looking layouts and I am really just enjoying seeing how they establish from these main roads. Uh, and this is looking pretty good. 
except for all these white trees that are starting to pop up. Yeah, you might see that some of these white trees are kind of ruining the vibe down here. Well, this doesn't last very long. It looks like it's a bit of a glitch with the London Plane. I think the textures are a bit wrong during one stage of the London Plane as it's growing up. So I didn't love it. So I decided to just go to the beach and leave the game running. And when I came back, booyah, it's all back to normal. Plus orange. Everything's all orange now. Also off screen, I spent a little bit of time just working out a bit of the layout of the streets and where some of the dirt roads are going to go. I really like the idea that it's a mostly gridded layout when you are in the heart of the town, but then as you get a little bit further out and when you get closer to some more interesting landscapes in terms of the rivers and the ridges of the mountains, then it kind of follows a bit more of a path that kind of follows the landscape. And I think that's a little bit more realistic and with that being said, I wanted to continue figuring out where some more of these ridges and little mountains are going to sit, as well as the flow of the river, which was going to be a real vital point of this town in terms of making it feel a little bit more interesting and detailed and just adding a couple of little extra points of interest. I always find that I don't really have a good idea of the finer details of the landscape until I start building out a bit of the built environment and then I can start getting a good idea of whereabouts I'm going to be placing extra ridges or little valleys and just get a good idea of where all this sort of fits with the rest of the map and as you can see we're starting to get a good idea where some of these roads are going to be snaking into and whereabouts they're going to be heading and what sort of natural features are going to be sitting out that way too but if you have any ideas please let me know. But in terms of the roads of the town, I was pretty happy with where everything was sitting. It felt pretty good, functional. Just a couple of little fine tunes here and there and we were good to go. All right, before I start zoning up this place, I do need to do two things first. I need to provide it with electricity and with water. Now the water part is easy because I'm just gonna go for a water tower. Nice and easy. And I think it's gonna suit this place really well. I'm gonna go right here. And I actually think that this might be a kind of a nice little park. So I think that's what I'll do with this area. However, for sewage and electricity, this is a little bit more annoying because we are so far away from New Dimesburg. It actually would be a lot of tiles to drag out some sort of electricity and water out this way. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to connect up to this outside connection. Now it's obviously not much in terms of tiles to buy up. I mean, that's not a big deal, but I would prefer it if we weren't relying on an outside connection for any power and for our sewage. I kind of feel like it's a little bit, a little bit cheaty, you know? I'm going to go for a local water source, but in terms of uh, getting sewage out of the place, we're just going to go with an outside connection. Yeah, I don't know, it just kind of feels a little bit too easy and convenient just going with the outside connection. You know, we're kind of raking in the money at this stage and I think it's because we're not really paying for anything too large in terms of these sort of services. So, I don't know, I am going to do it. <laughs> I can say that I'm still just going to drag it out there. Uh, but only because I'm planning on doing a whole episode where we do all those services. But for down here, I do have a bit of an idea of where my industry is going to sit which is convenient because we are going to be placing down a transformer station and I want that to sit within our industrial zone. So uh, I'm going to build it out here. This is going to be right next to our highway. So I think that's probably a good spot. Uh, unfortunately, uh, it's going to be right next to our, uh, our lake here, which is a bit of a bummer. But, you know, industry is a bit of a bummer. So that's all right. There we are right there. Now, controversial thought, but I think that power lines are pretty cool. Not just in City Skylines 2, but just in general. I think they are really, really interesting. Now, say that, I think they're also very ugly, okay? And I wouldn't want to live underneath them, but I do find them fascinating when I find them on Google Earth or even in real life and you kind of just look at where they go in the path and um, how they travel around. I do think that's pretty fascinating the way that cities kind of have to, you know, figure out whereabouts these things are going to be built and, you know, where they kind of fit within the other context of the city. But yeah, I mean, they're ugly as hell, but I, I do think that they are really cool looking. Um, and in City Skylines 2, I love the way that they work. Uh, however, though, I think this is maybe overkill for this place. Because at some stage, this is going to continue its path all the way into New Dimesburg. 
you know, I probably won't just rely on this transmitter. Well, I will, but then I, I also think it's going to continue. That's basically my thought behind dragging it out this way. Um, but I don't know. I think this might be a little bit too much for this little place. Actually, just a thought, but with these power lines, if you raise them up enough, they will change to these big ones. Uh, so just a thought, but if I was to do the same with these, oh, hold on. There we go. Look at that. Little, little big that's a pretty good size but this is totally pointless but I'm gonna drag out these ones all the way out here and again pointless yeah pointless but I think they're gonna add a little bit of extra detail to this little town and I like that am I alone here does anyone else appreciate or just kind of find um, ugly things within cities and towns still fascinating you know it can be ugly and fascinating at the same time now, I don't think these are behaving quite like they're supposed to. They're making little indents into the ground, which is a pain. But I've got, I've got an idea. The way that I've dragged this out, I've kind of dragged it around an area that is like along a main road and even along the river here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on the flattening tool, the level tool, and I'm going to get down to that level. There we go. And that doesn't look too bad because I think that it makes sense that this road is slightly elevated. Um, it already is elevated, but you know, right where the actual road is, that's where the elevation sits. And I think that actually is a nice little detail. So that's an accident, but I'm, I'm kind of happy with that. Yeah, I'm a fan of that. If I had the ability to do so, I would, of course, make all this side a bit more wild. And, you know, this is a bit of an embankment, so you'd probably place some um, big tufts of grass and stuff like that. But, um, you know, that's something for a little bit later. I'm sure we'll get um, features like that um, not too far away. But for now, I like it. The city is now all hooked up and that's kind of just going off yonder. But I think that'd be kind of fun when we interact that with some other farmland. Uh, we should, we should get to that. This episode's getting really big. I wonder what time we're looking at at the moment. All right, let's zone and let's keep it pretty simple. I'm going to zone some commercial along there and it probably doesn't want any more. How interesting. Well, that's, that's fulfilled that. Um, let's get some of this down. Now I'm going to do something a little bit interesting in terms of the residential zoning. Um, in fact, I'm going to go with European and I'm going to go with some low density and I'm going to try something. I'm going to do a little bit of that and a little bit of that and whoopsie daisies. Good stuff. And now that they're starting to grow, I'm going to grab a little alleyway and I'm going to drag him back here. Hmm. Am I? Hmm, maybe not an alleyway. There we go. I don't know, something different? Maybe I'll drag out, I don't know. We'll, we'll see how that looks. But let's, uh, let's do a few more. I'm just having a little look at the way that houses are spawning in and I have to admit, I think I prefer the European ones at the moment to the American ones because, I mean, except for this one, this one looks really nice, but I think that one's um, attached to this road here, whereas these ones, I think, I mean, it looks all right, but I think I prefer this, but I'm not going to get too much into that because I think houses are going to really come and go at this stage and we'll kind of just see how everything looks. Uh, when it all starts kind of growing around, but um, I don't love that. So I'm going to get rid of this and I'm going to stick with some alleys. Boop. And then a little further out, like this one, we're going to go for gravel. 
And just with the way that some of these houses have attached to these roads, it means that I haven't been able to zone up some of these blocks. It's leaving them a bit vacant. So rather than trying to fix the problem, I'm going to take this opportunity to turn this into vacant lots. You know, what they truly are. And you know, in some towns you will find quite a lot of vacant lots because some places in, uh, especially in regional Australia, uh, I know it's a little bit different to what we're building here, but you will find some towns that are uh, losing population. They are getting smaller because people are choosing to move and go to regional cities or major cities. Uh, not all towns are like this, but some towns are losing population. So uh, what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to use some of these small bushes and I am placing them in rows in a similar, with similar lot sizes to kind of show that this is where the fence once sat. And then, of course, these are going to get slightly bigger uh, as they grow a little bit larger. But I actually think this is working pretty well. I mean, this looks this looks pretty good, doesn't it? I think it does. Uh, but you know what? I'm kind of going a little bit slow right now. Should probably should probably speed things up a little bit. Hello, editing tools 20 here. Didn't expect to be doing a voiceover right now, but uh, all of the footage that I recorded over the next six hours, all of that, all of that commentary that I did while I was building, it uh, didn't work. So here I am doing a voiceover. Uh, but that's all right, I do like doing voiceovers. So I get to explain all the things that I do over the next little while. And at the end, I'll do a tour and we'll go through all the things that we built, as well as fix up a couple of little problems. But as you can see, for now, our town is starting to establish pretty well. Unfortunately though, because we are going so small, in terms of service buildings, the fire station is pretty much the only building that I can truly place down because anything else is just slightly too large. When I say slightly, I mean way too large. I am really happy with the way the growables have turned out. I love the fact that we have these fences just behind these little places and the commercial district actually fits in perfectly with this place. I think this works out really well. Of course, some of them are a little bit odd when we don't have quite as rigid of a grid. The houses do look a little bit strange when there aren't as many trees around. I think that this is going to truly thrive when we can have a bit more freedom with some of these trees I did ask you guys in the last episode, do we grab a couple of mods and I think we're leaning towards some sort of tree controller that just allows us to place down these trees a little bit more freely, but we'll get there eventually. At the moment, I think this is looking pretty good. I wanted to push on with some of the rest of these roads, figuring out how they were going to stretch across the river and whereabouts they were heading towards. These were going to be the roads that were going to be connecting up our farmland and just getting freight to and from the different areas around our region. And uh, this one in particular I wanted to be fairly special because this one was going to cross the river in a little bit more of an interesting way. We've got this awesome bridge that I haven't used yet. I feel like if we are dragging out these old roads that have been here for a little while, then this is the sort of bridge that would have definitely been here for a while. And I'm looking forward to this thing just becoming absolutely chockers with traffic because we are going to be having quite a lot of farmland out this way. Not in this episode, just a few of this episode, but eventually this is going to be connecting up quite a lot of other areas. So expect this guy to get pretty hectic at some point, but for now, it's just a humble little bridge. I wanted it to dip down into the valley as it stretched across, just to use a little less resources as we stretch across this valley. We don't need a huge amount of clearance. We only really have a bit of a stream underneath it. So the clearance doesn't really matter. And the rest of the road, as it stretches across this area, I wanted it to interact with the rest of the landscape a little bit differently to everywhere else. This is a little bit of a mountainy, ridgy type of area. So we've got a lot of interesting terrain as the road has to try and navigate it. So I like the fact that it kind of hugs the little ridge that we have here, as well as kind of stretching across the valley. But then as it kind of crosses up into this part, I did want to make it so that it was kind of cutting into the mountain just a little smidge and then also forming this little base. I don't really know what this is called, but it kind of just fills in this little gap. I kind of like it. And with our road down, it was now time to build our very first farm. Yes, 40 minutes into this video and we're finally building a farm. 
Now with this, I wanted to build a vegetable farm. This is going to be the type of agriculture this area is going to specialize in. You know, quite often these towns, these places will specialize in one type of industry. And I guess it's because, you know, that's the industry the place has been established from. But uh, it's not always the case. Of course, there is, um, you know, exceptions to that. But I do like the idea that we will have a whole bunch of different towns around our region that will have various specializations and will just have these kind of unique features to one another, you know, so they're not all the same. But I will also do some livestock at some stage. I'll do that in just a moment. But I do want to say that I am a big fan and also not very much of a fan of the way that farms work within this game. For instance, I love this mechanic. I think this is awesome. And I actually think that they look pretty cool. You know, they're nicely detailed. They've got some nice textures, but then in saying that, they also are not that detailed and don't have the nice textures. So for instance, the texture on this is a little bit repetitive. You can kind of see where the pattern repeats and they also spawn in these buildings that I don't think always work, which is a bit of a shame. But yeah, like I said, the mechanic is awesome and I think that there is huge amounts of potential with these farms, but I don't think that they work in every case. You know, I kind of feel like we needed to see different types of farms being created when we chose different types of farms. You know, this doesn't really look like cotton farming and this certainly does not look like livestock. So what I'm going to do here, instead of creating farms all around that have the same type of area, you know, the same farm, instead, my livestock is going to look more like this. I'm just going to place down the farm, but I'm not going to zone out or I guess stretch out the actual farming part because it just doesn't accurately represent what, uh, you know, what cattle would actually graze on. You know, I don't really want that. I'm more of an aesthetics type of player rather than someone who plays purely to make money or to see the city function. You know, it's a bit of a balance. And until we have better mechanics that actually represent that, I think I'm just going to stick with this technique for now. And you know, it's nice that it'll still function like a farm. It won't be producing that many goods, you know, because we won't actually be, I guess, really utilizing the amount of space that we could potentially be using. We're using a very, very small space. But I do like the fact that there is, I guess, a little bit of crops attached to the actual building and it will be producing something at least. But it does mean that we will be stretching out these trees so that it will kind of represent what these sort of farms look like. And I'm really looking forward to just extending it out so that we have more of these farms all around our little town. I think it's going to look super nice. Plus, I think that at this stage, you can really tell that we do need something to speed up the growth of these trees and just to add a little bit of extra density because this, this is just not cutting it. But as I continue to add in those little details, like some extra houses scattered around here and there, and even continuing our power lines, over this little area. I do think that this looks very, very nice. I do have to say with all the limitations that we have, I am also, also enjoying the fact that we do have to find creative ways to make places more realistic because, you know, after so long playing City Skylines 1 and having a pretty good idea of the different types of tools and techniques I can use to achieve the realism that I was achieving, uh, this time around, I have to rethink everything and try a whole bunch of different things. and. You know, quite often, and I think about this a lot, but I think that we are the most creative when we have restrictions and only have limited tools. And I do actually appreciate the fact that we don't have endless amounts of freedom because I do think that it does allow us to be more creative, especially when we are faced with challenges and limitations. I think then you have to think outside the box. And, you know, I think that that's what's happening here. You know, I complain, but I also enjoy the fact that you know, not everything is easy. I want there to be challenges. I obviously want some things to be a little bit better, but I am enjoying the fact that I have to do things differently than in City Skylines 1. I'm enjoying that. And with all that being said, I'm going to continue to expand out our farmland and I'll dive back into a live play in just a moment, give you a good old tour and fix up some things because there's going to be some problems and it's going to be pretty different because uh, I have started the next episode. Of course, I am recording all of this uh, at a time that I didn't think I was going to have to record it all. So we're going to dive back in. I'll give you a tour. And I think a few things might just be a little bit different. But for now, enjoy some music. I'll talk to you in a bit.
All right, so as I mentioned before, quite a bit of time has passed. There is an entire episode over this way. I have, uh, as you can see, there's a couple little uh, skyscraper boys. Uh, yeah, that's the next episode. Don't look over there, all right? I know I just drew your attention over there, but don't look. But yeah, in terms of everything else, things are looking pretty well established, aren't they? I mean, look at these trees, all grown up and looking all fleshed out. Wonderful. But as you can see, this little place is starting to feel a whole lot more established. There are still areas that I definitely need to improve on. We've got roads that need to be connected and winding up some of these areas and whole spaces that just need to be, um, you know, we do need some parks and we need a bit more um, services in this place. And there are some gaps, but I reckon when we start using some tree mods that allow us just to place them down freely, then we can actually fill these areas up a whole lot better. But in terms of everything else, I'm really liking the fact that people are using this area, they're driving around, they're walking around, they're living over here, it's just lovely. And the fact that they make this whole journey over to New Dimesburg is just so much fun. As you can imagine, the commercial district down here is absolutely thriving. I mean, we've got a lot of traffic coming through here. Uh, oops, okay, <laughs> maybe not. Uh, I thought it was. Well, it was before. It was absolutely thriving. Now it's uh, not so much so. So, okay, I take that back. It's not thriving. These guys are also leveling up pretty nicely, which is great. I uh, actually am a big fan of the way that these houses look. I actually think they work really well for this little town. And I think that a couple of extra trees around here would be absolutely perfect. Um, but as you can see, the sun is setting. I'm going to put it on pause because I think that as the sun sets, it gets to a much better lighting. And I think just those added shadows really adds to the look of this place. Uh, I'm really loving it. But I think my absolute favorite spot is just here with the hills in the background and just this little bridge up front. I think that this is just such a pretty little spot. And especially with these, uh, these power lines. I know, I know, I know. Power lines, they're very ugly. But I think in this game... They look awesome. And you know what? The farms are actually doing a pretty good job at leveling up as well. This guy down here is at a level four, but I think most of them are actually about a level five because uh, like I said, we have been flying through a couple of months uh, as I've been building up the next episode. So we're actually seeing these guys level up pretty nicely. Not so much the livestock ones because they are only operating on this tiny little thing. Uh, obviously this is just for show, but man, I really wish that that was kind of built more into the way that these livestock areas work because I think that's way more realistic, but, uh, I know that will happen down the track. I built this little section off camera. I wanted there to be just a bit of a strip of commercial and maybe this is where most of the people are actually shopping at because these guys are thriving pretty well. And I really love the fact that we've got all these convenience stores that uh, kind of all connected to our farmland as well. Uh, I'll talk about that in a second, but I just feel like this is where people are kind of stopping off and um, picking up some groceries or even just some fast food on the way to and from um, different areas around this place. Super cool. I also built this little trench, which, uh, I don't know, it's it's fine. <laughs> it's, it's my attempt at building a little ditch in here. But there's also quite a lot of happy accidents in this episode where I didn't really plan to do something. So for instance, I didn't really plan to have this little ledge here, but it kind of happened with these power lines. And when it's created, it's created this section that is all at a much lower area. So this is actually at the same level as the water down here. And uh, I actually really like the way that it's kind of just situated on this little plane. It kind of just makes it so that we're just sort of playing with the levels of the terrain and I really like that. But something else I've been playing with is I wanted the industry around here to reflect the agriculture that's being grown around our town. And when I first zoned it up, it was mostly furniture factories and um, places like timber. So this is another furniture factory and there's actually a whole bunch of them. And it was also producing stuff that wasn't really, had nothing to do with the agriculture around here. So what I ended up doing was I went into the economy, I went into production, and I was looking at the different things that we we're producing a lot of. So we we're producing a lot of beverages because of all the vegetables that we were growing. And we're not producing that much food, but we're producing a little bit. And then once I had a good idea of what I was producing a lot of, I could then go to taxation and then go to our industry and just give us a little bit more extra information. And then where there was food, 
I just dipped it down a little bit over there and the same for beverages, just giving them a bit of a tax break. And what that is doing is that's increasing the amount of uh, buildings that are producing or factories that are producing those goods because they have a bit of a tax break. So I'm actually encouraging them to produce goods within our town, which I think is a lot of fun because it means that we've got that nice connection. That was something that I really liked with Industries DLC and City Skylines 1 is actually just seeing that connection between all those facilities. So I like that. But before I head off, I just want to have a quick look at something. We are looking at 5 o'clock traffic, which is always a bit of a headache. Uh, in real life, it's a bit of a headache as well. As you can see, this place is getting awfully busy very quickly. And there are a couple of things I could do. Uh, one thing I'm going to do is we've got this one street that is connected to this main road that is um, in this little section. I'm going to leave that one connected, but I'll just make a couple of quick adjustments and we'll see if that changes much. Just a couple of extra rules just to see if that makes any difference. I think that's going to make a bit of a change. So everybody, it's just going to be a little bit hectic down here for a while. Uh, tough luck. But I have to admit, I do kind of love it. I love seeing a bit of traffic. I love seeing a bit of action down here. It makes me really happy. It makes me happy to see people actually using these roads. I mean, of course they would, but I don't know. It just makes it a little bit more lively. But what do you reckon? That's pretty much it. A lot has changed, a lot of things left to do. I'd love to hear what you guys have on offer. What do you think? What's the next step with this town? It's just so many possibilities. Hey friends, thank you so much for watching today's episode. It was a bit of a meaty one. I had to do a whole bunch of re-editing and re-recording, but I do think the end result, I think it turned out pretty nice. I'm really happy with the way that the little town's turning out and I'm really excited to hear your feedback about it as well. Get some ideas and some names too, because we do need to name this up. Can't just keep calling it a little town, as well as some of the places we've been building in New Dimesburg. We'll be back there in the next episode fixing up that place. It's a bit of a nightmare, wasn't exaggerating. Some things are really going astray down there. And of course, I am all for it, love it. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching and a big shout out to some of the patrons over on Patreon supporting the channel. Saga, Brad from Oz, Yalo Af, Sully, Kevin Thompson, Ronan Kelly, Bobby LA, Leah Horton, Cheffa Flex, and Yezin Wang. Cheers guys, catch you all in the next one.